using second life for assessment, my concern is uh, just the scaffolding of introducing this in those first, second, third years. Is it fair to link assessment to a technology that people are really unfamiliar with? What are your thoughts? Sorry, I'm not sure if it was just me, but that was very, very quiet and I really couldn't uh, hear the question. I'm not sure whether your, is your mic uh, right down? No, I, I had the same problem. I couldn't hear it as Ah, uh, Pauletta, thank you. Can you hear me now? Oh, that's good, yes. That's much better, thank you. My question was, um, I tried to introduce Second Life as part of an assessment um, tool and there was much reservation from teaching and learning at uh, where I'm working because it was such a new technology for the students. Um, what are your thoughts on that, how to introduce it and align it with an assessment, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, thanks, Pauletta, because I think that's actually a very important question. Um, and I agree that I think a lot of people are very sceptical uh, about these sorts of environments because they're, they're different uh, and uh, people want to see assessment normally done in a very traditional way. Um, I don't have any magic solution to any of these things, but certainly the approach uh, that I would certainly be um, thinking about is to start activities which are low stakes to start with. Um, so you can either do them as low stakes summative or formative, um, and you can do a number of formative activity for activities first and then build them up to a summative. Um, certainly in any E environment, people okay. traditionally do low stake summative assessment first before they go for high stake summative assessment. Um, certainly to build up confidence, to uh, build up the student's ability to be able to get used to this environment as well because it, it, uh, it's, it's a risk for students as well because for many of them, they, they already know how to do well in assessment tasks in, in a traditional environment. And so they've built up their careers, their, their learning careers as a student in those types of environments. Mm -hmm. And now we often give them a different environment and say, now go for it. And, uh, it, you know, students can also be very apprehensive about that. So I think the sensible way with all of these things is to start with some formative activities and then start with some low-stakes summative activities. So I'm not sure whether other people have got some um, suggestions on that as well or what they've done. Happy for anyone else to jump in here. Good question. We'll follow up on the um, New Media Consortium. Um, the, the New Media Consortium for... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll put something up on that on the, on the blog and also on the website because that's, that's, that's a really good that's point. Really so good. thanks. Thanks, thanks for that, Penny. Thanks for that. Uh, Peter? Oh, hi, Jeff. Uh, is the voice clear? Yes. Um, we're interested in looking at um, using eBay to teach business skills and using Facebook to teach community skills. So rather than using, if you like, virtual, virtual environments, we use virtual real environments. Have you any experience or comments on that, please? No, thanks, Peter, and that's interesting. Um, no, we certainly don't have any examples of that. Uh, so if you've got a link to uh, anything that people could have a look at um, and uh, but, you know, perhaps peruse something on that, I think that'd be great. I think there's, you know, there's lots of interesting things that people are doing, and part of what we're trying to do this year um, and actually part of the point of the webinars really is to try and capture some of that um, because you know, we've only looked at a couple of small things really um, and I'm really interested in 
trying to uh, collect examples uh, from other people of some really interesting and innovative things that they've done. And, and really for them to be honest about it as well, about what worked, what didn't work, um, perhaps what you know, needs to be changed, because other people would like to try some of these things. And I think often what puts people off is uh, they're shown something that looks really great, uh, but of course it might be four years worth of work and you know 50 people worked on it and they're not quite sure whether you know what they're in for so i think one of the things that we'd also like to capture is uh, not only the examples which i think are great but also you know uh, how much work is behind that how much effort is it to set it up uh, if you want to dip your toe into it where would you start um, that sort of thing because i think these are all important for dissemination strategies for these types of activities yeah thanks jeff um, I mean, the reason why we use those sorts of environments is because they don't take much, eff much effort to create assessments in them, like uh, some of the virtual Second Life environments. We also tend to use Google Docs to track uh, group work. Uh, using Google Docs, you can actually see the different students in a group contribute to, say, the construction of a presentation. And, and again, the driving force behind that is to keep us clear from a lot of work because the tools are already there. Yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, there's some good examples that you just talked about. I mean, there are actually lots of tools out there. Um, I guess one of the uh, issues, again, with all of that is how do, you, how do you collate all of the artifacts that the students have done how do you then take that and put that into a into your system within your institution? So I guess in different institutions that might be different. Um, but one of the uh, sort of so certainly one of the issues at our institution is being able to collect all those artifacts or being able to verify those artifacts and then get the results from whatever the assessment task is back into the university system. Yeah, thank you. We have that problem as well. Yeah, okay. I'm laughing too. <laughs> Any other examples that people would like to uh, bring up now? Because again, we'll, we'll capture a lot of the things that you put in the, in the text there. Okay, well, if there's, if there's no other comments that people want to make at this stage, um, we'll stay on a bit. Um, so if there's anyone who wants to stay on and, and still have a bit of a chat, uh, but I don't want to make people think that they need, you know, they feel obliged to be there uh, anymore. Uh, the main thing is, um, you know, if you're interested in following up on any of this, go and have a look at our Transforming Assessment website. That's where we've tried to put everything up. Uh, Matthew, Shamim and I will go through uh, this archive. We will draw out some of the key issues and some of the key points people made. We'll try and summarize some of those. We'll put them up on the blog to continue some of those conversations. And uh, uh, from my point of view, just to say thank you very much for everyone for being here and participating. And thanks for giving us some of those really good examples that we'll be able to follow up on. And if you have any other uh, colleagues that you know have probably got some good examples, um, please let us know about them. Uh, because one of the things we want to do is try and have a place where people can go to see a lot of these good examples. And we're interested in things across the whole range, uh, some very simple things to very sophisticated things. Because, you know, from an academic's point of view, many of them are just starting out in this area and they want some simple things to do which are effective. And so the more we can put those examples up, the better, I think. So thanks very much, everyone. Uh, just to let people know, I will either email out or post a link on our website where you can uh, locate the archive of this session. Thanks, Matthew. Okay, you could probably stop the archive now, Matthew. <laughs>